Are you looking for some good investment advice? Well, today we're going to look at a passage from Matthew's Gospel where Jesus seems to be giving some investment advice through a story he tells. It's a story about a man going on a journey. But before he leaves, he gathers together three of his servants and he entrusts his property to them. In other words, he makes them his investment advisors. Now to the first servant, the man gives five talents. A talent is a, a measurement of money. It's a significant amount of money. In fact, it would take an average worker maybe 15 or 20 years of working to accumulate or to earn the equivalent of one talent. So to the first servant, <clears throat> the man gives five talents. To the second servant, he gives two talents, which is also a significant sum. And to the third servant, the man gives one talent. And then he went away on his journey. Now the first servant went out immediately and began trading with his five talents and he was able to earn five more talents. I mean, he earns a 100% return on his investment. And the second servant goes out and does the same. He turns his two talents into four talents. Now, it would be nice if this was the place in the story where Jesus would insert that investment advice. I mean, who wouldn't want to know an investment tip where you could earn a 100% return, right? But Jesus doesn't breathe a word about how or where these servants made their investments. But I think we can assume that with a return like that, they must have been willing to take some risks. Now, the third servant takes a different approach. He goes out into the yard and he digs a hole and he buries that talent to keep it hidden away safely, not to gain anything, but also not to lose anything. He takes no risk at all. Well, Jesus continues the story. And he says that after a long while, the man returns from his journey and he calls the three servants together to settle accounts with them. Now the first servant comes and reports that with his original five talents, he was able to earn five more talents. And the man says, well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things and I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Now the exact same scenario and dialogue happens when the second servant, the one who doubled his two talents into four talents, comes before the master to settle accounts. <clears throat> but now tension is building as the third servant comes before the master. He explains how he was afraid of the master because he knew that he was a harsh man, reaping where he did not sow and gathering where he had not planted seeds. And the servant hands the one talent back to the master. No gain, no loss. He took no risks and made no investment in order to grow or multiply what had been given to him. Well, as we can imagine, the master is not happy. He takes the one talent from that servant and he gives it to the servant with 10 talents. And he has the third servant thrown out into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. End of story. So now where was the investment advice? Well, to understand, I think we need to uh, think of this as a story that is not necessarily about money. It is a story about investing. And it's a story about investing something that is even more valuable than money. See, Jesus is telling the story near the end of his ministry. He will soon be leaving on a journey that will take him to the cross and to the tomb. Jesus is coming to the end of his time of teaching. 
and his message is getting more urgent. In fact, right after telling this story about investing, Jesus continues to teach, a teaching that you are maybe more familiar with from Matthew 25. See if this sounds familiar. Jesus says, for I was hungry and you gave me food, thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, sick and you took care of me, in prison and you visited me. For whenever you did this to the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. What if that is our investment advice? Whenever you invest in the least of these, you invest in me and grow my kingdom. What if in order to win in God's economy, you have to invest in the losers and the lost and the lonely? I mean, talk about risky investments. But Jesus says that's where there is the potential for the big gains. What if Jesus is making us, our, his investment advisors, asking us to invest the riches of the gospel, the gains of grace, the fortune of forgiveness? And what if there is such an abundance of God's gospel goodness that we can afford to be risky? And those risks will grow the kingdom and multiply it many times over. About a month ago, the Interfaith Hospitality Network of Greater Cincinnati, one of our partner ministries, had their annual fundraiser and they held that virtually this year. Now the main speaker was an ELCA pastor named Lenny Duncan, who serves a mission church in Washington State. Now Pastor Duncan told us a bit of his story as a part of his speech. And it's a story that included growing up in poverty, in a broken family where violence was often present. He told of being homeless and his struggles with drug and alcohol addiction. But through many experiences of the grace of God, Lenny Duncan turned his life around many years ago and he heard a call to ministry and he ended up at one of our seminaries. Now his is truly a remarkable story. Well, as Pastor Duncan was speaking to us at the Interfaith Hospitality event, he knew his audience. He knew that most of the people listening were regular volunteers with IHN, people who set up beds and cooked meals and offered kindness to people struggling with homelessness. Pastor Duncan knew he was talking to people who had a heart for helping folks who were experiencing the same struggles that he had experienced when he was younger. And so Pastor Duncan offered words of encouragement. He let these volunteers know that the labor of love that they invest in homeless folks, the, the compassion of Jesus that they risk offering makes an impact. May, they may never see the return on their investment, but it impacts lives. He told us, when I was young and lost and lonely, the kindness that I received from people like you saved my life. Well, there's your investment advice. We are called to invest the riches of the gospel, the gains of grace, the fortune of forgiveness and to risk it on the losers and the lost and the lonely. And we have an abundance of love to invest. Because when Jesus saw that we all, all of us, are the losers and the lost and the lonely, 
he still invested in us. And what a risky investment we were and continue to be. But Jesus went to the cross for the least of these, including us. A risky investment that saved our lives. You see, we make risky investments with God's love because we know that we are no more deserving of that love than anyone else. And what a privilege it is to share that love with others. It isn't ours to hoard or bury. It's ours to invest, to grow, to multiply, and to bring joy to our master. This weekend, coincidentally, is when we are rolling out our Christmas gift program for this year, where we will be helping three of our partner ministries, including IHN and Taft Elementary School and Interfaith Parish Ministries. Here we have a chance to make an investment of love and care with someone who will probably be really struggling this Christmas. Now, our gifts won't solve all of their challenges, but they will communicate that someone cared, that someone made an investment of love in them. And that's what we're called to do, to make investments from what God has given us. And when we make those investments, it multiplies the kingdom and we get to share the joy of the master. Amen.